Hi, everybody. Mrs. Basico with some crazy hair. I just did bus duty. Ooh, it's frigid and cold out. Um, but what I would like to talk about today um, is the project that we're starting. And you watching this video will give you an idea of what we're going to do. It's also the same basic general information that I gave to kids in class today. Okay. Um, so if you go to the Google and it's supposed to be posted, I love how it's not. Awesome. There we go. Oh, come on. Anyway, if you go to Google and you go to today's date, 111, it says we're starting a project, read below. And basically what you need to do is watch this video. So keep watching this video. Um, and then, then you want to read the instructions down here. After the video is over, you're going to think about what element would I like to do research on? Um, and then let me know one that you would be interested in. If you feel ready for it, you can also decide tomorrow. And then tomorrow we'll actually start this. So today is just kind of watch the video information day. Okay, so let's start. Let's go down to this document here. And you can just watch along on the screen. So here's what we're going to be doing. And we went over this in class also. So as soon as it loads, come on. There we go. All right. So this is called, I'm just going to read this off to you. The Element Superhero Villain Project. And it says, I'm going to read this part here. Congratulations. You've been hired by Elements of the Universe, a comic book publisher, to create a new superhero or villain whose appearance, characteristics, and powers are based on a specific element in the periodic table. So now that we've learned all about the periodic table, you are going to take an element of your choosing, something that sounds interesting or unique or something you may not know about, but you like the word or whatever. Um, you're going to pick one element where you're going to research and learn all about the different characteristics of the element. Then you're gonna turn it into a superhero or a villain, and both are super fun. So let's take a look at the next paragraph. So I'm gonna scroll down here. It says, in order to create your unique and creative character, you will conduct research on a particular element. Um, and while you're doing that, you're gonna fill out a note sheet. That'll be part of your grade. After your research, you'll create your ultimate superhero or villain. You're actually going to make a picture of it, a drawing. And then also there's going to be a little paragraph that goes along with it where you introduce your superhero or villain to the world. Okay? So um, if you take a look at the steps of this project, and we're not obviously doing all of them today, um, the first thing that we're going to try to focus on is this number one. You've got to figure out what element you'd be interested in first, right? Um, and I'll show you the separate spreadsheet that has the options on it. Um, and then you're going to research your element and record information on this worksheet, and I'll show you that. Um, and then steps three and four we're really not going to worry about right now. But basically three and four are you're going to plan what your villain or superhero is going to look like, and then you're going to make a drawing of your superhero and villain where there's certain stuff that has to go on it. And then you're going to write a paragraph about your superhero or villain. Okay, so a couple suggested resources on what you can do. And if you want to stop this video and um, do this video in segments so you can kind of look at some of the resources before you move on to the next instruction, please do that. That's completely fine. So um, let's start by doing this. Let's actually look up, talk about what we want to do research on. So if we go back to Google Classroom, there is a document that says Google Sheets that says Pasico Element List. Now these are generally the most common elements that people decide to do something on. If you notice at the bottom here, we've got all the different class periods. So one, two, three, five, six, right? Um, so you want to make sure you look at your own period. Uh, you can't fill this out yourself. I'm going to be entering the information. But basically, um, elements one through, and this is listed by atomic number, number on top, 1 through 33 are basically given to you. So these are kind of really the easiest elements to do this project on. You've probably heard of some of these. Nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen, helium, fluorine, neon, sodium, calcium, chromium, iron. You've probably heard of some of these before. These are all options. The number that comes before it is where you find it on the periodic table, right? That top number. Um, then there's also occasionally some students who want to do like the golds and the random things. So they, I also put in arsenic, which is poison, silver, iodine, gold, mercury, lead, these three are kind of tricky, so I'm going to take those off. But the rest of the elements are available to you. I highly, 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 highly recommend that you choose one off this list. That is because these are the easiest to find. If you go to your periodic table, let me get one really quick, and you pick one of these random ones at the end, sure, it's nuclear and really cool. It can probably do a lot of damage, but it is so 
hard to find anything interesting or anything that I can even understand in the research that this would be very, very, very hard. So again, I really encourage you to stay in like the first 40 elements because not only is there the most information about it, there's also the most stuff. And it's just the, it, you just have a better project because there's more information that you can use. You go down to one of these really weird elements and you're really going to struggle with finding anything you can understand. It's very, very challenged. It's not really a fun challenge. Okay. So these are elements you can choose. So what you could do if you want is like, mm, I've heard of potassium and I've heard of calcium. Maybe I'm interested in that. So go back to Google Classroom and there's a couple things you can do. One you can go to back to the superhero page. So where the introduction was. And if you scroll down, you'll see a couple things. First, you'll see the periodic table song. Remember the one that went you can watch that again and get an idea right of all these different elements. Okay. Or if you want, there's also an element song by there might be giants. Um, that also goes to the elements. Um, another really easy, great thing to do is just click on one of these, like Chem for Kids, and actually look at the element for a second. See if it'd be something you're interested in. So let's say I was interested again in potassium um, or maybe another one. I'll pick another one, like magnesium. All you have to do is scroll down to where magnesium is and look. Now I can read and get some pictures about what it's actually used in and what it might be. Oh, I really like cameras and flash bulbs. Maybe I would blind my enemies with a flash from a flash bulb or something like that. And you can start getting the wheels turning on what you might be interested in. So I would take a look at it because sometimes you read about it and you're like, eh, this isn't really for me. And so sometimes doing a little background research really helps. Okay. And then if you keep going all the way down, here are some of the other elements, right? Here's potassium and calcium. So again, I could go to potassium and say, okay, what am I learning about potassium here? Da, 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 da. Oh, it's in bananas. Oh, it's here, here, near. And you get, get a little bit of research information, just so you're not walking into it blindly, okay? I would highly recommend doing that. Another thing that you could do is go back to this. Duxter's really good too. If you click on Duxter's, and then you click on the actual periodic table itself, or actually down here, it starts going through all the periodic tables. So again, here I can uh, I can choose like sodium or potassium, and it'll take me to another page that's going to tell me exactly how to do this. Okay, um, so really, really great, nice ways to learn about your element, okay, and get an idea. So what I would do first, and what the most important thing is to do today, is maybe have a couple elements in mind, have a couple ideas. Um, as soon as you are certain about your element that you would like to do, um, you're going to tell me, and you can send me an email, we're going to do this in class. But basically, okay, come on, thank you. Oh, the wheel of death. But basically, I'm going to type in, okay, um, Sarah is going to do carbon, and this person's going to do this, because I don't want anybody in class doing more than two of the same one. Because once we introduce and show each other these, if it's all carbons or it's all hydrogens, it's really, really boring. So as soon as you have an idea of what you would like to do, please email or you can even message me on Google Classroom and let me know what you would like to do, okay? Another thing that you might want to think about is going to the research page. This is the page that everybody's going to fill out. It's a big part of your grade, so let's go to it right now. It's taking forever. Sorry, I also had my coat on because it was freezing outside. Okay, so this is your research document. This is what you're going to do, and it actually has a bunch of stuff. So if you scroll through it, you'll notice there's all these things on there. We're only going to talk about the first one. Um, in class, if you come back in time, um, this is a sheet of paper that they're going to get. I recommend using the paper, but you don't have to. But here are the things you're going to have to find out about your element. Okay? First, you're going to need to find out all these things. The element name, the symbol, the atomic number, the mass, and the state of matter. So is it like a solid, a liquid, or a gas? 
Then you're going to need to find out how is the element used. So what are three things the element is used for? Maybe it's used in bananas. Maybe it helps strengthen your bones or your skin. That's the kind of things that you're going to be writing here. Um, down on the side, I have some suggestions. So this could be good or bad uses. So again, it could be good or bad things. But what you really want to do is include some detail. Describe how it's used so that a classmate would understand. So just writing down fireworks toothpaste is really not the best way to do that. You want to look at your source of where you got information and say, okay, in fireworks, what part is it? Maybe it makes the color of certain fireworks, or maybe it causes the firework to explode. Don't just put one word answers. Try to really find out so that if somebody said, well, what does it do in toothpaste? Tell what it does. So maybe it's used in toothpaste and it's used to help strengthen Oops, not, yeah, uh, okay, I'll uh, help make your teeth stronger. There we go. Ah, can I spell today? Your teeth stronger, okay? Or it's used in a chemical that makes your teeth brighter or something like that. Try to find out and elaborate on your response, okay? Notice how we have three, or there's supposed to be three. Did I, oops, here. There's supposed to be three responses. What did I just do? There we go. So there's supposed to be three, okay? You can add more if you would like, because again, the more you know, the more you can do with it. Then you can say, ooh, I could make my superhero villain related to toothpaste, or maybe they have some something related to fireworks and blowing up or something like that, right? So the more initial research you find about your element, the better it's going to be. Okay, so let's go down to this bottom part. This one is tricky, but it's also the most important one to find. So it says, what are the properties of your element? Properties are characteristics. So this is where you're going to find out what your element looks like, how it acts. So you might find out any of these things. You don't have to find out all these green things here, but um, these are things you can look for, like what color is it normally? What's its shape? What does it smell or taste like? Is it smooth or rough? Is it bendable or tough? Is it strong or weak? Is it shiny or dull? Is it hard or soft? Does it have a melting point so it melts at a certain temperature? Does it have a boiling point? Does it have a freezing point? Is it highly reactive? That means that maybe it reacts with something really easily and causes an explosion or causes something crazy to happen. And does it conduct heat or electricity? So that combining with heat cause it causes it to create heat or that if electricity runs through it, it causes it to do something. So really anything that you find out, this is where you're going to fill your whole section with just a whole bunch of information about what you find out about what your element looks and acts like. Okay. So what does element look and act like? Let me add that. Element. Ah. Oh my gosh. Element looks, wow, and acts like, okay? So those are examples down there, okay? So you're going to include that in there. And again, if you need to add more spaces and more inf information, the more information, the merrier. The more information you have, the more you can pick and choose what you want to do with your super villain, villain um, or hero. It's also the better grade you're going to have. So the more information you can find, the better. Okay, the next one is what year was your element discovered? So maybe it's been around since the Middle Ages. Maybe it was discovered by some dude in 1920. Whenever you find out when it was discovered, that goes here. Okay, next one. Where is your hero or villain's hideout? So this just means, and again, the green makes it a little easier to understand here. This just means where is it found in nature? So is it normally found underground? Is it found on Pluto? Is it found in the air? Is it found in our bodies? Where do we find this? Um, where is it, nor you know, is it in, in the ocean? Is it in rock? Is it in salt? Um, where would I go to find and actually get this element? Okay. And again, you find all this out by doing research. Okay. So the next one says, what other elements does your element combine with and what happens when it combines? This category is honestly the trickiest one, but sometimes you might be reading about like hydrogen and find out, oh my gosh, it mixes with oxygen and that makes water. Um, and so this is what you're going to do is you're going to write down what it might combine with. So what other elements 
does it form with and what happens? Again, this by forming with that element, it could be weaker, it could be stronger, or maybe it has a new power or a new weakness, something brand new it does. Like if you remember um, from talking about a little bit in class, Na, which is sodium, okay, that's a metal, and Cl, which is a poisonous gas, combine and make table salt. So kind of interesting that these two things that are very different and this one thing that's super poisonous, when it combines with something else, it becomes something we put on our French fries or add to our dishes. So there's all sorts of stuff that you can learn about what it might combine with. And remember to not just put down what it combines with, but what, what it actually makes or what happens when you do that. Because then sometimes you could have a sidekick or you might want to stay away from that because it becomes dangerous. You just learn more about your element and what it might combine with. All right, down to the next one. This last part that you need to be concerned with today is, is this element generally good or bad for humans? Does it help or hurt us? And then the most important part, explain. So I shouldn't be seeing good helps body. That is a really weak prophetic note. That's an okay start, but that will not get a good grade if that's what I see in your notes, okay? Tell me why it's good. Tell me how it helps the body. Really elaborate, okay? So the notes are all about, and you're going to have a couple days to work on this during class. It's all about finding as much information. It's like you're a researcher or an investigator, and you're trying to figure out, become an expert on this particular element, on this particular atom, as much as you can. And then anytime you find stuff, you can copy and paste it, or you can type it into this note section. Does that mean you have to do everything with it? No, but the more information you find, the richer, um, the better results, the more options you're going to have, and honestly, the better your grade, okay? So you might say, well, where the heck do I find this research? Well, if you go down, back to Google Classroom, back to where it says superhero villain, where the directions were, and you click on that, a lot of the websites that we recommend are all the way down at the bottom. So where it says research links, here they all are. Clicking on them will take you to a variety of different websites. Now, Miss Moran, the other science teacher and I, went through all these different websites to make this, okay? So what we did is we Googled and looked at websites and decided which ones were good and which ones were not so good. So please don't just go home or don't at school, just Google your topic. Because sometimes you get really random things and sometimes it's not the right thing. What you should be doing first is going back to this superhero. Now I'm going to lose it, aren't I? Go back to this page that has the links and use these links first. Look for where your element is. So let's say you had hydrogen, right? You're going to click on a link, go there, and search for where hydrogen is, okay? And then as you look up hydrogen, so here's hydrogen, I would recommend instead of just looking for stuff, actually start to read it. And whenever you find out things about it, you plug it into your notes. So for example, it says over 90% of all atoms in the universe are hydrogen. Whoa, hydrogen is everywhere. Okay. Hydrogen makes up about 75% of all the matter. And then look at this next sentence. Hydrogen atoms are also the smallest and lightest of all the atoms. Okay. So that tells me some things. So I can go back to my note sheet. Okay, and I can start writing some things down that I found out about hydrogen, right? I can do the element name, the symbol. I can start talking about how it's used. I can start writing down some of the properties, like lightest um, element that exists, right? And those are the kind of things, and I know I didn't type it out there, but those are the kind of things I want to write down. So as I go through the website, you actually, it's really important to read. So as I go through the website, I actually look at each paragraph one at a time and I read it and then I say, okay, what could I use that might help me? And then I go back and I plug it into my notes, okay? And make sure you actually read it. If you just look at stuff like this and write down sun, when it comes to explaining and doing your, your character, you're not going to have any idea what it means unless you write down some notes. So this is the nittiest, grittiest part of the project. If you can do a really good job here and do some muscle work, you'll have an amazing project, okay? So today, as we go back to Google Classroom, your first job 
is to look at the elements and think about which one you might want to research, okay? Let me know then by emailing me, um, and please make sure you include your name so I know who it is, what element you would like to do, and I can add it to the list. Then tomorrow what we're going to do is we're going to start out right away using those research links and writing in some information. Of course, you can do that if you would like to today. Um, but basically, Wednesday this week and Thursday this week, you're going to have in-class time or have those days to get your research done. Friday, as you know, we have a half day, so um, we're going to have a different schedule. And then Monday next week, we have off. So basically, your research sheet, just the note part, should look really good and meaty and awesome by the time we hit class next Tuesday. So you've got a long time to do this. You've got a long time to ask for help, whether it's after school or it's during lunch or it's during ACE. Okay. So that's what you're doing. Please go back and watch any parts of the video you did not understand. Take a look at the resources. And of course, email if you need at, or need anything else. Oh, and you know what? Let me show you really quick. Here's the kind of stuff you're, you're creating. So just so you can see really quick, here's some examples. People end up making pictures and they do paragraphs, but there's some really cool stuff. Um, so this is, it's really hard to see and I apologize. This is Professor Cobalt. So obviously an evil dude. Look at Professor Cobalt. Uh, this is Magnesia, named after magnesium. So see how they create their own character based on what they learned. Um, let's see. This is Princess of the Nickel. Okay, and they did a picture that looks like this. This is what you're eventually working towards. You have a really good final product once you do your research. Um, let's see. Ooh, this person's cool. This is Golden Girl. Okay. Uh, this was, this is Neon, Count Neon. Ooh, look at his fangs, Count Neon. Okay, I know it's really hard to see in that picture. Um, oh, look at this one. This is malarium or malaria. Whoa. Right? So again, you're learning stuff about your element and you're turning it into after the research into all these different things. Um, this one's really funny. This is death rock. <laughs> this is arsenic. Okay. You can kind of see it's a little rock character. It doesn't even have to be a person. It can be like a random superhero, like a cartoon. Okay. Um, this one is Soul for Man. Okay. Um, and I'll show you some more examples later. But basically, what you need to think about is that you're going to be creating a superhero and you're going to have a lot of help and a lot of options. But think about what element you would like to do first. And don't forget to email me to let me know what you'd be interested in doing. Okay? Thanks for listening and watching. Have a good day.